because I think it's disgraceful to use charity streams to dress up your brand like this. I think it's grotesque, okay? I hate it. As if Hassan is red on theory. Give me a break. What? what? Jesus Christ. God, his chat is so dumb. This is what I keep saying about Hassan. He is a fraud. He's a fraud. He presents himself a certain way, when in reality, he's just an airhead, idiot, influencer guy. The artist level ticket. We're in a Gucci shirt. Ah! Come on! We got him. Dude, you are such an inconsistent, pathetic little worm if that's your worldview. You can't even hate on Kotaku appropriately. What do you want Asan to do? Die? Not have any clothes? Sadly blocked by Hassan on Twitter. So, as you can see here, I think I've probably told you already, I got blocked a little while ago. Very, very tragic. Very tragic situation. Um... But anyway, I saw this tweet doing the rounds. So what happens now is I see people like quote tweeting Hassan and I'm like, what's he said? And then I have to go into like a incognito tab to see what's going on. So it's actually annoying to be honest with you. I'd rather he hadn't blocked me, but it is what it is. It is what it is. But I saw this. Sorry, it's obviously light mode. The Met Gala is happening again. And this year's theme is straight flexing. It's gilded glamour. At a time when wealth inequality has passed gilded age levels, they've gone fully mask off. <laughs> Listen, bro, I'm sorry. I don't think it's your place to say this anymore. <laughs> Listen, bro, I don't think it's your place to say this anymore. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? Obviously, every single Met Gala is about rich people wearing wild fits. But the Gilded Age is simply an era defined by robber barons melting the poor for profit. It's the most Marie Antoinette theme yet, in my opinion. Then again, I hadn't really paid any attention to the prior themes. <laughs> Bro! How can you lack this much self-awareness? This is mental. This is absolutely insane. Look, he was getting called out hardcore in the replies. Isn't going to Coachella and wearing an extremely expensive outfit just to take pics at a Ferris wheel the same sort of thing? Oh no, he was getting called out. I guess you're technically mask on if you flexed your wealth. Oh my god, this is insane. Bro, you went to Coachella in a a thousand dollar shirt. Oh God, is this another? Is this another one of his tweets? Oh no, this is someone else. Who's this? Oh, I don't. Who are they? I don't even know who they are. Well, I'm not going to bother looking their tweet up. I can't believe the audacity of this man <laughs> to, to like, <laughs> wait a sec, hang on, this isn't real, is it? This is, this is a, a fake image. This was, he was at Coachella, not at some thing there, but yeah. Met Gala is like top 1%. I know people who make like 40k a year and still go to Coachella. Yeah, on an absolute shoestring, on an absolute shoestring, people that are on 40k don't go to Coachella wearing thousand dollar shirts, I can assure you. <laughs> like, what is he on about? You really think that Assam was on like the, you know, obviously at festivals, you've got like different, um, you've got different standards of tickets, right? So you've got like the, the real low cost tickets that to just basically get you in and listen to the artists. And then you've got like the higher quality tickets that have VIP access and stuff like that. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't think he's there going there scraping together. I don't think he's, listen, <laughs> I don't think he's had to scrape together the money to get to Coachella. I'm pretty sure he managed to do it without even thinking twice about it. <laughs> this is insane. The private jet was a meme. The private jet was a meme. The shirt was a real thing, but the private jet was a meme. The thing is, is the issue I have with this isn't isn't so much like like it's it's just the fact that he's got this fucking audacity about him, right? 
He's got this fucking audacity <laughs> to like call out other rich people. It's like, bro, you're fucking rich yourself. What are you on about? It's insane. Anyway, I never really covered the shirt thing. I never really covered the shirt thing because I was like, you know, not that bothered about it. But anyway, let's see what he had to say about the shirt. Let's have a look. I've got the video here. We got the footage here. Let's have a little look see and see what's going on, shall we? Most people get canceled for like sexting minors or get canceled for buying an ugly ass expensive shirt. Yeah, I mean, he's not wrong, but he shouldn't say it. It's true though. Like motherfuckers can't find some shit like that. So they just like literally pick whatever they can to be like, can we just f cancel this guy? Can we just cancel this guy? It's not real. Cancellations are not real. Yeah, I did see the post of, that, of this one. And Wait, what? <laughs> No, not over a shirt. No, you just got heavily criticized by a whole bunch of people who thought you were a fucking moron for wearing this stupid ass shirt. But like, what is he on about? Cancellation isn't real. Yeah, in these circumstances, he's actually in the category now where he's wealthy enough that unless he did something absolutely insane, then he, he's uncancelable now. Do you know what I mean? Anarchist girl. Dude, it has, dude, literally, I'm gonna be honest with you. The easiest thing to do, if you're like a up and coming, blossoming, like internet content creator, all you need to do is just say, Hassan is bad and I hate him. And you will literally get like seven gorillion likes. People will be like, oh my God, what a brilliant, incredible, concise, coherent, and awesome and smart way. Like your analysis is so correct. And then boom, like, Promote your Etsy shop, promote your art. Like, look at this. She literally said, Hassan bad, my outfit good. I'm a better leftist. 67, 68,000 likes. Hang on a sec. What does the tweet actually say? The $12 fit that I wore to distribute food versus that 1,000 plus fit at Coachella. <laughs> he's so, he is so sensitive, it's unreal. This is like the lightest jab I could imagine. This isn't even a slap round the face. What's this? What's this? Um, we got artist badges. Um, You're well, not I got an artist. artist guest, and, and I'm not an artist, but I got an artist guest. And from who? I'm. Just, I can't say. Anyway, uh, from one of the performers, gave you an artist. I, I, I'm not. I'm not at liberty to discuss this. Okay, so so you got the you got backstage where it's all nice. So um, we got Jesus artists. Christ. Yeah, just like someone on 40k going to Coachella, you know, having to use the shitty, the toilets that are fucking wrecked, having to spend hours upon hours queuing. <laughs> yeah, just another everyday Andy needs there on a fucking artist ticket. The absolute best you can get, probably. Fucking hell. This is what I keep saying about Hassan. He is a fraud. He's a fraud. He presents himself a certain way. When in reality, he's just an airhead, idiot, influencer guy. That's it. That's what he is. But people still hold on to this idea that he's some sort of, like, political, like, you know, I don't know what the right word is. But they still hold on to the idea that he's doing something important. And it's like, no. No, he's not. He's just he's just being an influencer. This is This is just what shit influencers do. And the reason I don't care about other big streamers that are like influencers and stuff is because it's like they're just honest about it and they're upfront about what they are. But this, I don't feel that he is. You know? So, um, yeah. My outfit good. I'm a better leftist. 67, 68,000 likes. And then literally just like, it's a sequence of like, hey, please, I'm promoing my shit. Please. And it's crazy. This is like a fucking industry now. You know what I mean? That's wild. The Hasanabe Clips Industrial Complex uh, has like a new... The Hasanabe Hate Industrial Complex. Like there's two sides to it. The one side is just like making money off of, you know, just posting and reposting my shit. The other side is just straight up being like, you're bad. The craziest part is none of these people listen to your re-theory in a realistic way. They think you're unread, which you're clearly not. Yeah, I know. Fuck. As if Hassan is read on theory. Give me a fucking break. What? What?
<laughs> the person that said that giving someone a laptop is giving them the means of production. Yeah, this bro is super well read on theory. Jesus. But they just like, these people have never seen anything. I had to defend you to a friend that was just repeating the same delusional shit people say about you. People hear that shit on Twitter, don't even know if it's true, and they just run with it. It's insane. The thing is, like, it, it just, it, it has staying power, okay? It has staying power. You can't fucking find something. You can't find something serious, so you look for something that's unserious, and then you add on the I love the fact that, well, the, who is this person anyway? What was their name? I can't see. Well, is the quality low or something? Why is the quality so low? What the hell? Um, air, iridescence. How do you... Oh, fucking hell. How do you spell this? A-I-R-I-D-E-S-C... I mean, I don't know. It's like, yeah. Why? <laughs> like, this is the common thing. I, I don't really understand what the big issue is here. The fact that she's shilling stuff underneath it. She's got like 10K followers. You know, I, I doubt that she's like super big. Like, I, I just don't see the issue with her promoting stuff. But yeah. Anyway. Posting? Yeah, you're probably not doing great. You know what I mean? No, like, happy, financially secure person is, like, uh, as as delusional. Unless you're me or, like, fucking... Unless wait, you're me, yeah. Wait, Twitter back. don't even know if it's true and they just run with it. It's insane. The thing is, like, it, it just... It, it has staying power, okay? It has staying power. You can't fucking find something. You can't find something serious. So you look for something that's unserious. And then you add on to shit over and over again. Like, it's just, like, a, a sequence of, like, minor cancellations or baby cancellations that aren't real at all that add up. And in the end, it just creates this air around <laughs> I love the fact that I love the fact that this dude presents himself as this socialist, right? Wait, what's this? That's cool if he's doing some sort of outreach thing. That's yeah, that's good. That's a good thing, for sure. Anyway, listen, RTBA. We know you're a massive Hassan simp, so give it up, okay? Anyway, I love the fact this guy presents himself as like a socialist, right? I love the fact that he presents himself as a socialist. <laughs> and he's getting criticized for what's called conspicuous consumption, which is basically the, you know, term for like flaunting your wealth, right? And he acts like he's being cancelled. And it's like, no, there are like substantive critiques here, you know? There are, like, substantive critiques within this. Like, it is a bit fucking weird, champ, that you present yourself as being, like, a socialist, yet you go and engage in, like, the most, uh, you know, create the craziest, like, purchases. Like, buying a fucking Gucci shirt. I don't know. To me, it just is... I would never buy a Gucci shirt. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's wild to me. <laughs> I went in the shop the other day and I was looking at all of like the, the clothes. It was a um, Selfridges. I was like a Selfridges, right? And I was looking around at all the clothes. And um, it was just like, what even is this stuff? What even is this stuff? Like some of it is just like, what the fuck is this? You know, it's so, it's just so overpriced for what it is. And the funny thing about it is if you actually look at where the clothes are made, often they're made in the same places that all the other, you know, fast fashion clothes are made, you know? So, yeah. If you're rich and still dressed like Mark Zuckerberg, though, it's kind of cringe. I just I just think clothes are a um, really classic example of like, um, like commodity fetishism or something. Yeah, like Bangladesh and shit, yeah. But yeah, I don't see how wearing like a plain t-shirt and a hoodie's cringe. Around you that you're like a bad person because other people don't like you, so you must be a bad person. No one has enough time to like come in here and listen to what I have to say. No one knows how consistent my position has been on all this other shit. You know what I mean? No one knows any of that. No one has time for charitability. Everyone's angry. Everyone's material conditions, especially if you're on Twitter shit posting. Yeah, you're probably not doing great. You know what I mean? No, like, happy, financially secure person is, like, uh, as as delusional. Unless you're me or, like, fucking... Unless you're me, yeah. I'm the only... Wait, is he talking about this person who just did that little meme? 
<laughs> what the fuck? It did a little like kind of, I'll look at my $12 fit versus Sans fit. Jesus, what a fucking asshole this guy is. Strange motherfucker who like responds to all the haters and shit. So I created this environment thinking that I could like reason with these people, thinking that I could reason with the wave of negativity associated with me because I am insecure and I do ha want to have, you know, I, I do want people to, especially allies, like people who are supposed to be on my side to understand my position, to be charitable when they're when they're talking about me or take part in this community. So it, it hurts. It destroys me when it's right wingers i don't give a fuck uh, obviously i know where it, it comes from with right wingers like oh socialism is when no money socialism is a poverty cult socialism is a poverty cult so when it's allies when it's supposedly people who are leftists i'm like what the fuck dude what are you doing like and then on top of that like the last person that really broke me was just like someone was like hassan is i retweeted it but they basically were just like hassan uh, mark plyer is what hassan would be if he was a good <laughs> oh, person oh no like, that really one's stuck like a bad person what the fuck like i've never done like you don't know me that's crazy you know what i mean like what? yeah I, I i wouldn't say like i don't think asan is like a bad person i think that's probably a bit excessive um <laughs> but he's yeah i just hate the dishonesty i think he's a very dishonest person you know i just think he's extremely dishonest and he uh you know I mean, to be fair, I've not I've not really watched like a lot of his recent stuff as to whether he has distanced himself. Wait, are mutuals with the person who made that meme after he quote tweeted, she felt bad and deleted. Seriously, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's like. He presents himself a certain way, and I just don't think his actions acts, uh, match with how he presents himself. You know? But uh, the thing is, is I don't think he's dishonest because he's a bad person. I think he's, dis he's dishonest because he's a fucking idiot. I just think he's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Who's just lucked upon... I mean, like, I say lucked, like... I won't deny there's a level of hard work that he's engaged in, but like the fact he was, you know, let me ask you a question. Would Hassan Piker be where he is now if he wasn't Cenk Yuga's nephew? And here's another question for you. Where would Hassan Piker be right now if he was Tucker Carlson's nephew? That's an interesting thought as well. That's an interesting thought too, isn't it? <laughs> and I think that really demonstrates Hassan really is. I, I don't think he would be where he was if it wasn't for the links that he had, you know. I mean, this dude literally got an internship out of university at like one of the biggest progressive um, in, um, new media outlets around, the Young Turks. Like it's it's like crazy, the, the leg up, the, the leg ups this guy has had, you know. Um, yeah. And he is extremely good. He is exceptional when it comes to clout sharking. He is the biggest fucking clout shark you've ever seen in your entire life. You know, nowadays, he just hangs out with his big streamer buddies. There was a time when he used to help out the smaller streamers when he was a bit smaller himself. You know, the small minority streamers, he, was, he would give, give them a raid here, give them a raid there, go on their shows, all this kind of stuff. Not anymore. <laughs> Not that's all stopped. No, thank you. No, thank you. But yeah. How? Dude, I, I never said I don't like luxury shit, okay? I mean, the shirt was not uh, a good purchase regardless. Like, it, the fact that I, I'm gonna sit here and fucking defend this shit, but like, it's so silly. The wealth talk is dumb. At least attack your positions or takes. You record eight hours of them a day. They can't. They can't do that. That's the point. They can't get mad at- Yeah, when people do that like out of something, you call them a fucking, you call them like a subhuman European Nazi, or whatever the fuck it was you said about him. <laughs> what the fuck is he on? What are they all are they on? This fucking copium. <laughs> yeah, when people criticize you more substantively, you call them a fucking Nazi and shit. Jesus Christ. God, his chat is so fucking dumb.
like what I'm saying because they agree with what I'm saying usually. So they just like have to find some other reason. Like I don't give a fuck about Elon Musk because he ha he wears expensive shit. Like is that why is that why we don't like Elon Musk around these parts? Is that the reason? Because he wears like expensive garb. Is Mark Zuckerberg actually not evil because he fucking dresses in the same outfit every day? Is that the reason? Because that's what it seems like. The way that people get mad about these things, they are so hyper focused on the aesthetics of shit. When I am a normie facing leftist content creator, perhaps the only one who is not a fucking weirdo. I'm just a normal dude. So all of the abnormal fucking <laughs> he's not a fucking what does he mean? He's a normal dude. He's not a normal dude. Are you kidding me? Oh my fucking god. He's not normal. How is it normal to, to have the fucking pathway through life that he's had? He's Cenk Yuga's fucking nephew. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> yeah, just a normal dude. I'm just like you. <laughs> fucking hell. Fucking weirdos that are permanently online are like, Wah! he's not behaving in the way that we would want. He's not canceling everything and he's not fucking losing his shit over every little thing. It's like, I'm sorry, dude. I know I, I should be a little bit more fucked up in the brain, but it's so fucking stupid that the idea that you're a good leftist or a bad leftist revolves around like how you spend your money is so stupid. But of course, the other side of this and the reason why I'm covering this for once again is for you. Guys. Okay, I don't listen. I don't think that leftists should flaunt wealth. I think that's I don't I don't agree with that. I think that that's wrong. I think it promotes you know a very bad like if he's saying he's oh you know he's just influ he's influencing these people and all this stuff. Yeah, don't fucking flaunt your wealth because it suggests that that's a good thing to do. And I don't think it is. I don't think flaunting your wealth is good. I think that that's you know in opposition to to the sort of values you ought to advocate for as a lefty. Conspicuous consumption. Go and look it up. <laughs> like, it's fucking there to read. It's exactly what Hassan does. Jesus Christ. Guys, but the other side of this equation always is the more I talk about it, the more people will turn it into a big deal. For those of you who are wondering, if you genuinely are wondering, I'll tell you what happened. On Monday, I mean, I, I kind of like packed a bag going to Coachella. And Coachella is, a, is, is not even about the music. Obviously, I think everybody understands that. It's about a performance. It's not about the music. It's yeah, it's not about, you know... It's not about living in squalor, or it's not about like living in, in like not having nice things, you know? Having nice things is fine, but there's a difference between, you know, getting stuff that's of a good quality, getting stuff that you need, getting stuff that's gonna like do, a, you know, be a, a, a long standing thing that you're gonna use for a long time, versus this conspicuous consumption which is when you engage in consumption of commodities, which is essentially, you know, to flaunt your wealth, like buying a, a, a car that was well beyond like what a, a regular car would cost. Same for a shirt, you know? It's about a performance. You're literally performing for the internet, okay? That's what it is. It's online, you know, it's like micro-influencers, niche celebrities, and also larger celebrities getting together over the course of a weekend to just, you know, show off their outfits and go to these, like, events and parties and all of it is fucking sponsored. It's basically a festival. Hmm. It's about sharing off outfits, is it? What was that tweet again? <laughs> what was that tweet that we saw a second ago? Let's have a little look. The Met Gala is happening again already, and this year's theme is straight flexing. It's gilded glamour. At a time when wealth and equality has passed gilded age levels, they've gone fully mask off. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's just, dude, fucking listen to anything he says. He's so inconsistent, it's unbelievable. It's so fu Does he just not see the inconsistency here? Does he not see it? Does he not get it? Is he really that fucking stupid? Obviously, every single Met Gala is about rich people wearing wild fits. Just... <laughs> I'm just like, bro, how the fuck do you have the audacity to put this tweet out? This is fucking insane. Jesus.
people created specifically for content creators to create content. It's like, it's almost like VidCon. You know what I mean? That's what it is, but it's like with music. It's the most normy festival possible. And everybody always like fucking yells at me about what I wear. So I just, you know, I didn't really prepare. Okay. And I gained a lot of weight over COVID and I'm like losing the weight now. I'm feeling a little bit good about myself. And I was wearing that fucking red Cowboy Bebop shirt that Will gave me. What ended up, oh, I mean, it just did not, it did not look good. The red, uh, the red shirt. It was like one of those shirts where you like fucking, it's not only Twitter left is either. One of the streamers I watched was shitting on your fit and you go into Coachella. And I was like, who, who is like, if you're a Twitch streamer and you're angry that I'm going to fucking, uh, uh Coachella, like what the fuck is wrong with you? If you're a social. Okay. <laughs> There's a difference between going to Coachella, right? If if any streamer just bought a regular ticket to Coachella and just went and had a, whatever, right? You're allowed to have holidays. You're allowed to have a nice time, okay? This motherfucker went on like the fucking artist. The fucking artist level fucking ticket. Wearing a Gucci shirt. I'm going to lose it. What the fuck? How is he acting like, yeah, just, I just went to Coachella. What's the big deal? Like, bro. You were thriving at Coachella. You didn't just go to Coachella, okay? You were thriving at Coachella. Jesus Christ. If you're a leftist, like, no one will ever be satisfied until you fucking literally uh, die by a firing squad, okay? In the hands of, like, what? an oppressive bourgeois state. It's so fucking stupid. I mean, what? you're getting mad at me for something while simultaneously standing all these other people that, like, end up doing whatever the fuck they want. And, and they should. That's crazy. It's so inconsistent. People think you're just a performative socialist. I don't, but that's okay, fine. Like, who cares? Yeah, I'm a fake. I'm not real. I'm not a socialist. I'm a capitalist. Okay, I love capitalism. Num, 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 num. Okay, how about that? What do you think? It's like a positive thing to be associated as a socialist? Do you know how many, I get death threats every fucking day. Who cares? I just don't like to be, I, I, I hate that I have to be purity tested non-fucking stop. The I, love it. I love it. I love that's like it's purity testing. When people are like, hang on a sec, bro, you present yourself as a certain political ideology, but you engage in this, you know, insane level of, of uh, consumption and, and purchasing expensive things which are unnecessary. <laughs> like, that's not purity testing, bro. That's saying, yes, it seems like you're a fucking fraud, you know? Part about this, okay? Isn't the the steady barrage that like starts to link hurt it my to me under makes me second guess myself about who I am and what I represent? Because it does after a while break my brain a little bit. No, the fucking annoying part is all the good work that this community puts out. Okay, this community as a collective, as a unit puts out, it's completely sidelined. Hundreds of thousands of dollars raised for fucking Ukrainians. No one gives a fuck, right? Hassan is a Russian imperialist. Hassan actually loves Russia doing. Imperialism. Okay, look, I, I, I. I think charity efforts are great and charity streams are good, okay? But that's your audience's money. <laughs> like, that's your fucking audience's money. What do you mean? You've missed out on a day's earnings, which is probably like what? You know, uh, uh, whatever. But and, and you go, oh, look at this money. Yeah, that's your audience's money that your audience have put in. I hate it when people point to, like, the amount of money that's been raised. It's like, it's great to do a charity stream. Don't get me wrong. But this is, that's one of the reasons that I hate charity streams is because people will use it to dress their brand up in righteousness and they'll just point to it and be like, what about when we did that? That's your fucking audience's money. What are you on about? Do you know what I mean? Would those people have done it if it wasn't for Hassan? Like I say, it's fine to do a charity stream, but don't use it. It's so fucking crass. To use that to point to when people are criticizing you to go, what about when when I did that? What about when we did that as a community? That's so fucking crass. And it's exactly the kind of thing as to why I don't do charity streams myself, okay? Because I think it's fucking disgraceful to use charity streams to dress up your brand like this. I think it's grotesque, okay? I fucking hate it. Charity should be something that is not used as a sort of like, oh, hey, look how great I am when you're getting criticized. That's the only thing that matters in that conversation. Like I'll, I'll have Steven Donziger on and, and he was like, your community is incredible. He literally was like, it, it was one of the best, you know, we got an incredible response from your community. Wait, <laughs> the Met Gala, wait, <laughs> hang on a sec. The Met Gala is a charity event. Seriously. Wait, what? Wait, I thought it was like some fancy ass thing. Is it a charity thing? 
Oh my god! What? <laughs> that is insane! It gets worse! I didn't know that. I didn't know much about the Met Gala. All I know is the AOC tax the rich thing. I didn't know it was a whole whole charity thing. Oh my god. I don't really talk about Asan. You notice nothing's gone up on the main the YouTube recently about Asan. And it's because I just I feel like what else is there to say? The guy's just a joke and a fraud. And uh yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm just like look at what he is. Look at what he is. Like there's nothing more to say about him, but this this tweet about the Met Gala, I had to talk I had to talk about it. It was driving me insane after that interview no one cares no one cares about any of the good shit and when you don't care about the good shit because like it's super hot to just shit on me to be like dude Hassan fucking sucks like you see that shirt he got and that's the only thing that people care about then my work becomes completely irrelevant because who i am and what i do as far as like the positive as far as like the fuckboy influencer shit goes is just normie appealing okay it, it's how i become a content creator that is appealing to normies like the lifestyle stuff okay i also enjoy it <laughs> oh my god well you see everyone i have listen i have to go to coachella in a gucci shirt because that's what appeals to normies i'm gonna get listen don't worry about it i'm gonna get people into this socialism stuff but the, the only possible way that I could do it is to go to Coachella wearing a Gucci shirt. Oh my God, this guy's so such a piece of shit. It's unreal. Personally, it's fun. I like to have fun. I'm a fun person. I'm not like a fucking weirdo who just exclusively reads theory and is just like angry at the world all the goddamn time. Would the shirt drama happen if Austin Ox didn't start the first tweet? Probably not. But he was just memeing like, I don't have an issue with what Austin Ox is doing. He likes to, he likes to fuck around. It's just uh, deeply frustrating. I've been here since day one. You've been a massive positive influence. I've helped fundraise for bail funds, lawsuits against police brutality, and consistently worked to provide better conditions for my employees as a manager. Fighting against executive management, trying to be capitalist. Would never have happened without you. Never doubt the positive impact you've had on the left yeah no they're incredible community they're incredible fucking organizers your stands meme so hard that it reads as real hatred so many people just straight up tweet insults about you that 100 read as negative to outsiders yeah i think that's the other thing like i think the back and forth that we have in this community like uh, or the the dynamic that we have uh in the twitch chat and 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 how it translates to the outside literally people think like you know, my community just fucking despises me. And then other people jump on the hate train every single time. Like, and they take it seriously. It's crazy. And look, ultimately I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a good place. You know, I'm in a good place. I, it just sucks. Like I had a good time. I haven't taken like time off from streaming in a very long time. And you know, I was having a great time. And then I come back and like, I go online for a second and there's just like hundreds of thousands of fucking comments being like, you're evil. Like you're a bad person. Can we finally all agree that has Son is a bad person. Three thousand likes, and it's just like, what the fuck, dude? What? What, what have it's, I done? The thing is, <laughs> for me, whether Hassan is like a bad person, I said earlier, I don't think Hassan is a bad person. I think he's stupid and doesn't understand sometimes. I don't think he's like malicious. Is what I'm trying to get across there, right? But like, there are critiques that are made of him that are perfectly valid, and he just so you know he just sort of disregards them and this is coming from the man who says he likes to seek criticism out tell me what criticism is it that Hassan seeks out that he listens to and benefits from where is this fucking seeking out of criticism that he does I've never seen it every single time this dude gets criticized even no, I'm not even talking because look getting like a bunch of people calling you a dickhead for wearing a shirt is going to be annoying I'll grant that right but even when like Adam something is giving him like quite a pointed critique, right? He just fucking loses his shit. He just throws his toys out the pram and goes insane. So where is it that this is happening? I never see it from this guy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Under you. I've done nothing to you. You don't know who I am. You clearly have never watched my shit. Or even if you watched my shit, you like got mad when I banned you or something. And now you're, now you just like despise me. And it's literally all like, all the controversy is so stupid. All the controversy is so, so idiotic. It's never serious. It's like, it's all dumb shit. Like, 
purchasing a fucking expensive shirt. And then, you know, the ones that aren't expensive, they're fucking awful. Uh, you know, those shirts are bad too. And I mean, I'm sorry. It like, it hurts my feelings. You know, it, it just sucks. I'm a DSA chapter co-chair and we've got new members who reference you as a reason for joining the DSA. Good. That's why I do what I do. But then it fucking hurts me when I can't do that. And then people are like, bro, that's why I do what I do. Oh my God. Okay. Then what would happen if tomorrow, right? <laughs> fucking they said, right, we're not going to pay you anymore. We're not going to pay you any money, okay? You said that you do what you do for, like, the DSA, so just do it for free for them because you've got enough money now. You've got enough money to, to last you for a little while. Do you think he'd be like, yeah, because I do it for that reason? No. I fucking hate it when people say that shit, right? No one does it for the love of what they do. It could be one reason they've ended up doing this. But at the end of the day, all of us do what we do for, for, for money, you know, that's a big influence as to why we do it. We might be willing to take less money for a quarters we believe in or something like that um, or something we really enjoy. But this idea that he does what he does because he wants to get people into the TSA is fucking nonsense. Why don't you fucking, why don't you take criticism better? It's like, what, that's not even, that's not even criticism. Like, what are you talking about? Saying, saying I'm a villain or a bad person is not criticism. That's just like, you're just mad. You just hate me. I, I don't know what, like, they, there's nothing constructive there. You de-radicalize me, bro. I started as a hate watcher. Good. I, I hope that that's my goal. That's literally my goal. If you're in here excited to fucking clip chimp and hate watch, like, just be charitable. Charitable, please. That's all I ask. Just be charitable. Be charitable. Be charitable. Think about why you feel the way that you do. Overall, four out of five. Be charitable. <laughs> From the most charitable man we know, obviously. <laughs> um, can say, yeah, you can have nice things, obviously. Like, there's nothing wrong with, like, purchasing. We know we live in a society, okay? And we need to have nice things, we, you know, in order to, like, we, for example, computer right i need a computer of a certain standard which costs a certain amount of money um and i can't build a computer myself so i kind of have to buy a computer but i don't think that's like an extravagant i think it's when the extravagance comes in you know it's the extravagance that i think i i would take issue with exactly he's not charitable himself it's this, it's this concept of conspicuous consumption that I think is really interesting. That's what, it's, that's what it's about. It's if you're buying a nice thing, not because it's of a good quality or because you need it to do something, are you doing it just to flaunt your wealth? You know? Are you doing it just to flaunt your wealth? You know, I, uh, I've got a, I can't remember how much I spent on this. It was like 270 or 280 quid. It's only like a, uh, one of those, is, is it Xiaomi? Xiaomi phones, a Poco or something. And I got it because it's got 5G in it, you know? But even if, like, someone bought a phone that was, like, 600, 700 pound or, like, eight, nine hundred dollars you know, that's fine. But if you bought one of those, like, jewel-encrusted phones, like, that's a bit fucking weird, champ. That's not just buying something because you need something of a good quality. That's flaunting your wealth. Buying a nice quality shirt made of cotton, no problem. But buying a Gucci shirt, which is just designed solely to flaunt wealth, is, yeah, cringe as fuck if you're a lefty. Five for the fashionista himself. What was your everyone's favorite look? So, yeah, I mean, I, I people were hating on the fits. But, yeah, this is what I got. So, originally, I was wearing a... I was wearing... This is such a stupid thing to explain. The reason why I got the fucking Gucci shirt, which is incredibly expensive and, and felt disgusting. Not that it matters. I can buy whatever the fuck I want. And anyone that gets mad at that can suck me from the back. Regardless, though, I mean, it, it felt disgusting. I, I felt insecure, okay? That's what it was. I felt insecure. I, I was wearing the fucking shirt that Will had gotten me, and it wasn't, you know, it didn't look good. It didn't feel good. It was like, it's one of those shirts that you wash one time, and then it, like, de gets destroyed, like a shine shirt. You know what I mean? It wasn't a shine shirt, but it was an anime shirt, but it just, like, did not look good at all. So I was like, I, I want to get something. I want to get something nice, okay? I want to get something nice. We're at Coachella. This is going to be douchey. Fuck it. YOLO. Let's do it. Let's get something douchey. First, we went to off uh, fifth Dax, fifth avenue or whatever and there was nothing there it was all golfing shit so we went to the gucci store it was right down the street and i was like yolo fuck it literally <laughs> to the gucci store like the lack of self-awareness is fucking astounding went to the gucci store. who the fuck just goes to the gucci store <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> jesus
Literally every celebrity, every famous person, everyone that has a decent amount of money at some point has worn Gucci shit with not a single person getting mad at them. So I went and I bought this shirt and the shirt is very expensive, but that was the reasoning behind it because I felt insecure and uh, you know, good job guys. Well, not you in here, but good job to everybody on the internet. You made me feel like shit. Okay. You did. You you did. You succeeded. You made me feel like shit. I was having a fun time with my friends and you succeeded. You yeah. That's your conscience speaking, bro. That's your conscience going... Hassan, bro, you're supposed to be a socialist and you're at the Gucci store. What what the fuck are you doing, bro? <laughs> Go and look up conspicuous consumption. You need to find out what that is because you're going to do it and that's bad. Lefty Welcome shouldn't be doing that shit. Nation. Hey, Stevie MC, thanks for the sub. <laughs> what do you want Hassan to do? Die? Not have any clothes? I'm sorry, but the idea that your only option is golfing clothes, golfing clothes, or the Gucci store. <laughs> okay, where the fuck were you? That was your two options. You can either wear a golfing polo or Gucci shirt. Like, fucking bullshit. It's just bullshit. Probably did not have a fun time this weekend, and you succeeded in making me feel like shit when I came back, making me feel like I'm a bad person, because you genuinely, I guess, think I'm a bad person. Why? Because I bought a house, a car, a Gucci shirt, which is really funny because, like, it's the first time I've ever made an expensive, you know, clothing purchase ever, and it's ridiculous, and it's irrational, but who gives a fuck? I will buy whatever the fuck I want, suck my dick. And the first time I bought something actually expensive, it's be it's about moralizing your your ridiculous hatred for someone. It's not a serious it's not a serious concern. It's not an intellectually it is. honest uh, criticism. He's he's being so dishonest now. He's banging on about fucking theory and shit. That kind of behavior, flaunting your wealth. Okay, you are you are plugging in very nicely into the fucking framework of capitalism. If you're if you're flaunting wealth, okay, because that's one aspect of our society. You know, you know the temporary embarrassed millionaire thing. That's that this sort of this sort of behavior fuels that this idea of oh hey look at that person they got this got this you know nice shirt nice car I want that I want to you know go towards that you know. I don't know. I just, I just, I don't know. For me, like, I, you know, I just, I just can't. I just couldn't ever see myself buying a Gucci shirt, you know? And don't get me wrong. When I, when I worked in like sales, I used to like spend more money on clothes uh, back when I was more of like a lib, you know? But now I just, yeah, I just don't think I could do that. I don't think I could ever justify spending silly amounts of money on like a piece of a, an item that was made, was just to flaunt wealth, you know? It's not even constructive. It's not even criticism half the fucking time. It's just people being like, I don't like Hassan. And it's not enough that I just don't like him. I don't like him for a good reason. It has to be for a good reason. Yeah, it's this. Bro, this is a great example of this. So pretty much everyone agrees Hassan is Garbo at this point, right? 3,000 likes. Oh, look, it's How that, do you go from being a fan person. of mine and following me to just like tweeting this because it, it's it's super validating when you can get 3,000 fucking likes saying just this. Wait, wasn't this over the... When did the Adam something drama happen? Wasn't this over the Adam something drama? Right? This is from the 17th of April. Was that from just the shirt? I can't remember. This is not even a take. You gotta admit the good faith in teasing Coachella Post were funny. Yeah, of course. Of course this shit's funny. This is hilarious. Yeah, this shit's actually funny. Uh, obviously. I mean, I, I liked it. Who dressed better? Me and my uh, friend for a party in my basement or Hassan and Will for Coachella. Like, that's actually funny. Like, ribbing on me and shitting on me in a funny, humorous way is always valid. And I literally allow it. Maybe I, I allow it a little too much. That people... Yeah, I retweeted this one. Me wearing a $100 Hassan hoodie I ordered six months ago at home waiting for Hassan to stream again versus his $10,000 Coachella fit. You know, Hassan Piker will never Coachella. Like, I obviously, I, I, you know, the outfits do not matter. My calculated effort towards carefully crafting a semi-viral tweet worked disheartening and so, and you were all the ones that made it work. Every time you comment, like, and share, you increase engagement. The spectacle is fed. Enjoy.
Don't hate Hassan. He's irrelevant to my daily praxis. The point of tweet was weaponizing skept spectacle to usher people towards anarchist practice. Praxis, you saw the rest of the thread. I do not care if he spends 100k on an outfit. I will do what I do. Feed and clothe my community. Oh my god, anarchist. Yeah, I know. It's funny, right? Because he, yeah, that was that original tweet was just super, super light. <laughs> I don't know. I just think he is probably one of the most sensitive motherfuckers uh, on the entire platform. To be honest, yes, dude, I, I, I do, I, I do want a video game myself when uh, I read stuff like that. Anyway, I, I'm sure she's doing great stuff for her community, so I'm not gonna fucking shit on them. But goddamn, dude, like, the hate isn't gonna stop. You can literally accidentally step on a ladybug and people will call you a demon. All you can do is keep doing what you're doing and feel proud of your accomplishments that you've managed to achieve at this point in your life. I know it's discouraging, but you have to persist. Yeah. Guys, you can't have Hassan discourse every time his editor tweets about a thing he's bought. You simply can't. I won't let you. I know Ostanox likes me, so I'm not trying to come down hard here, but this man has too much power. He's a gremlin. He controls, like a, he controls you like a puppet master and he needs to be put down for good. I agree. The best part was people biting hard on the obvious jet lie then never correcting themselves because they got so many likes yeah that's the other part like yeah wait. the private jet thing the private i don't know how people didn't see the private jet thing was bullshit like i don't know what's going on here but like he's ov the, obviously this isn't the same fucking time frame and people fucking idiotic or what you know like he here he is at coachella and here he is on a private jet looking younger with shorter hair like come on that's silly what do you dumbasses think that my fucking hair grew? Like, my haters are so fucking delusional, dude. I think Hassan is good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is what we got to do. We got to fucking pump out the... We got to pump out, like, positive Hassan takes in the future. So, like, so that people stop fucking freaking the fuck out and thinking, like, everybody hates me. Holy shit. Uh, and then do praxis off of shitting on me. God damn, dude. You didn't do fucking praxis. You just got a lot of likes on your tweet. And then you promoted your shit. I'm sorry to say this, but if Praxis is about like how much fucking clout you can farm off of uh, negative engagement, holy fuck, I'm doing Praxis out the goddamn wazoo, dude. Especially considering like, you know, how much I donate to, uh, to, to fucking mutual aids and shit. So I guess I'm, and how much money I raise too. So I guess I'm like literally fucking doing Praxis out the wazoo, but it doesn't matter because it's not, you don't hear about that. You don't know about that. Why don't you just brush this off? You feeling like you need to stand up for yourself just comes off as you really taking this to heart? I mean, it sucks, man. It, it, it is. I shouldn't do that i know i shouldn't but it hurts my feelings dude what the fuck yeah it's probably one of the reasons why I, people do it because yeah exactly you just can never address people that say shit like this you just can't god he's such a fucking crybaby it's unreal jesus wait what's this clip anyway what's this that's not working give me the pro give me the link again please if you would if would it would you kindly what's this my face when someone tweets about me lost keemstar okay republicans you lost keemstar republicans you lost dave portnoy okay that's how fucking crazy this abortion shit is like the advocacy the advocacy i saw him get out of there in a tweet oh no Or, sorry, I just saw something. I just saw Ludwig, and I got fucking... Hey! I saw Ludwig uh, uh, respond sorry. to me and said, bro, that's what it says in the article, as though uh, the implication is, is like, that mentioning me in an article for Kotaku, mentioning me in an article saying, like, it's so fucked up that these Twitch streamers are fucking uh, abusing uh, complex social dynamics or whatever is appropriate because they said I was a political commentator in the article. Come on, bro. Come on, Ludwig. What the fuck, bro? YouTube Andy over here. This is a dumb article, but it literally says that in the article. Hassan reading. His ass is not reading. And that's why you're Ludwig. Really felt like they were getting paid per word hit right in that article, Stevens. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's so fucking sensitive. It's unreal. <laughs> Jesus. About reading past the headline. Fuck is true. Hassan could have found a YouTube video that reads the article for him, so it makes sense he didn't read it. Dude. Ah! Come on! I read the article on fucking stream! Come on! Jeez, Hall's energy. The point is, it's fucking ridiculous to say top two streamers are capitalizing on Depp v. Heard trial trauma. And oh, it's this. I'm literally a political commentator, Lamau. I mean, I, like, yeah, but, like, 
<laughs> I doubt Hassan is doing it in a very kind of like cold, calculated way. I bet he's doing it in very much like a... Uh... I bet he's doing it in very much like a, uh, oh yeah, look at this, look at the memes, da da da. It's not as if he's just coldly like reading out what's going on like a newscaster. Jesus Christ. What is he? Is wait? What's this? <laughs> ah! Come on! I read the article on fucking stream. Just apparently capitalizing, making new shit. Um, I don't care. But tears counter, smart counter, laugh tears counter. I, mean, I didn't do any of this shit, so I don't know why the fuck they're saying this about me, especially um, considering the fact that you know I, I'm, I'm a fucking news broadcaster, dumbasses. I do, I do, you know, kind of uh, what you do. No. Why am I? Wait. <laughs> Is there any? Is that it? Is that is that seriously him reading it? Is that for real? <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's not reading. What is he talking about? He's <laughs> what a fucking liar! Jesus. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that Kotaku article was like a bit cringe. Um because I I feel I feel like often you have these things that happen and everyone's in it for like this stuff. But I do think Twitch streamers in particular obviously are taking it in a very um memey way, which like I'm fine with and I'm cool with. But there probably is some level of criticism in there that's probably, you know, somewhere somewhere in there there's something to be said. But the fact he's using the I'm a political commentator in response. Sorry, what politics is it that's going on in a um, in the defamation trial between two celebrities? What fucking politics? That's not a defence, is it? What? What is he on about? I'm a political commentator talking about a defamation trial between two actors, and this apparently is political commentary. Okay, nice one, bro. And then put me in the fucking article. Yeah, At this garbage, point, anyway. even a friend of mine can fucking turn around and like make a joke or say something dumb and then like a million fucking pathological, mentally ill psychos will literally just be like, we got him, boys. We fucking got him. These fucking Jesus. incels. That would literally fucking shoot up schools, turn around and defend Kotaku because they get normally they hate Wait, Kotaku. What? But hey, listen, in this circumstance, in this fucking situation, I'm going to side with Kotaku on this one because he's like they're hating on my fucking favorite streamer. What? Wait, what? Why, are they, why are they incels? What the fuck? Why, why, why is he talking about incels? What have incels got to do with this? What is he on about? Fuck yeah, dude. I hate Hassan more than I hate Kotaku. Got him. Dude, you are such an inconsistent, pathetic little worm if that's your fucking worldview. You can't even hate on Kotaku appropriately. Jesus. <laughs> Reaching new levels of copium. Holy shit. I, I don't know. I just... Your guess is as good as mine on that one. I've got no idea where the incel comment came from or what that's got to do with anything, but there we go. Okay. Let's uh, watch this that I found. Oh, let's have a little fun. What's this here? Apparently... Hassan Pike could call me mentally ill. What the? What? What the? Why isn't it opening links? I don't. I don't understand what's. Okay, we'll just watch it here. Now look at her. Don't show me this stuff. This person literally has TV in their name. They're literally a fucking clout demon, dude. What's wrong with you? Like, stop. You're a 21 month subscriber. You're a 21 month subscriber. Is that your favorite content creator? Is that why you're in here? Like, why? You're literally fucking. Trying to get a, a fucking deranged, mentally ill person clout right now off of saying psychotic what? shit. <laughs> it's fucking unreal. Why is he saying that about Eris? 
What did Eris do? Jesus. Well, anyway, who's seen this? This show is sponsored. I haven't even seen this. Anthony Padilla. Anthony Padilla or something like that. I spent a day with Hassan Piker unraveling the controversy. Has anyone has anyone seen this? I, I only saw this like I was like, damn, I didn't realise this had come out. <laughs> I haven't watched it yet. Let's have a little look and see what happens. By BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existence oh, is awesome. Oh, Padilla. Okay. What do you got? Let me see. That's mm -hmm. wild. It, it yeah. won't even fit. Okay. Oh, it fit my pinky. Oh, damn. That went on my biggest finger. My name's Anthony Padilla, and I spent a day with Hassan Piker to uncover the truth about how amassing over 2 million followers on Twitch and becoming the top political pundit of our generation has changed the trajectory of his life, and how nearly everything he does is considered so controversial that entire hate campaigns have been constructed against him. Hello, Hassan. What's going on? <laughs> oh no, you it's one of these. An average. It's one of these. It's one of these. Of one million followers a year on Twitch. Okay. Right? I, I don't know. <laughs> now, over the past two years, each year you've had a high of almost a quarter of a million concurrent viewers. Why do you think so many people are drawn to watch you? People are not very honest about why things are terrible. Everybody, for the most part, feels a little worse overall year over year. I think a lot of people feel angry. I try to direct their anger at the system rather than individuals and explain to them why they feel the way that they do. Use that anger that you feel Boy, towards months, more baby, productive you. avenues. Instead of getting fucking upset at wealth inequality in the system, try to change the system. I uh, have an empathetic worldview that centers around uplifting marginalized people on not only the basis of identity, like uh, whatever kind of marginalization that they experience, but also class which is something that is devoid from the American conversation most of the mm -hmm. time. As long as you are willing to learn, as long as you're willing to change, then you're welcome. I'm, I'm going to talk to you. And try yeah. to I mean, like, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just, um, maybe I'm just a bit cynical now. <laughs> but whenever people talk about like uplifting marginalized people, like to me, it just is like, oh yeah, I think it's like saying, I think racism is bad. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like such an obvious thing, isn't it? It's such a fucking obvious thing. That why do you need to state it? Why do you need to fucking state? Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, as if as if someone's gonna be like, actually, I think that minorities should be suppressed further. I'm for suppressing minorities and bringing back Jim Crow. Like, what what other alternative is there? Obviously, that's something you're gonna be of interest in. Why do you have to say it so plainly? Like, it's just like saying racism bad. It's that level. You. Right, right. Because I think that that is how you change people's minds, and I think I've been relatively successful at, mm. you know, deprogramming a lot of people's like prior. Uh, oh God, this is fucking cringe. Prior uh, attitudes and beliefs. Do you think this is part of why you are seen as such a controversial figure? Yeah, for sure. This is like centuries of of wiring people a certain way. On the one hand, someone can sedate you into thinking like, no, everything is normal. It's the best way. And then on the other hand, you have someone who's like, no, you should be angry at the system. It kind of spoils the game for a lot of people who would rather maintain that stability there's a concerned effort of like presenting me as more controversial than i actually would be yeah. it's the age-old narrative that uh you have been able to create which is socialist but uh, he's a hypocrite because he has uh, nice things mm -hmm. like that's unacceptable it's a poverty call it's supposed to be a poverty mm -hmm. call it's stupid the thing is it's like i genuinely feel like we're at the stage now where we it doesn't have to be a poverty cult I, I don't think that people, like right-wingers maybe, I think have got that perception. But I think people on the left generally, are, you know, are cool with like people having like nice things. But it just gets, it gets to silly levels. And that's when I think you've got to be like, well, hang on a fucking minute, you know? Can you list some of the controversies that you've been a part of? Oof. I don't know if we have time, sure. but uh, yeah, I should... know you got to go stream for 12 hours. So <laughs> yeah, we just like, do a full list. <laughs> One of my first big controversies was America deserved 9-11. I'm saying it. 
America deserved 9-11, dude. I'm sure lots of people watching right now are happy to hear that I have someone on the show that said America deserved 9-11. I talked about all this stuff, and that obviously was the reason why I said it's blowback. Like, we funded the same people that did 9-11, and we continue to work with the same people, the government, that uh, played a way, way more fundamental role in 9-11 than Afghanistan or Iraq. Literally, there was like eight documentaries, I think, that came out in the 20th anniversary of 9-11 that described all of that. So I had a lot of my friends even, they were like, I kind of hated what you had to say back then, but now I totally understand what you were talking about. Why do you think it is that these documentaries can say the exact same thing as you, but not get any blowback? Because, they- because like, I mean, yeah, like, like obviously you can say didn't say it as if those poor fuckers in the towers deserve to get yeeted out of existence. Didn't say it in my language. Like, <laughs> let's be real. I mean, I'm gonna be fair here. Okay. Really, they okay. didn't say America deserved no. 9/11. No, they didn't. <laughs> Do you regret using the language? No, specifically. Not even, no, not even remotely. I think it was a matter of being taken out of context. It very quickly went into a subreddit. They blasted it off there, and then Keemstar picked it up. I mean, of course he doesn't. He had Chenk fucking Yuga to launder his image. This is like, it blows my mind. This this point, right? Look. Why, you know, you could literally say anything. It wouldn't matter with fucking Chenk Yuga. Hassan, Piker, Young. Fuck's sake. Fuck off. Cable, get, get out of it. Young Turks. 11. Look. Look at this. Hassan Piker addresses online comments. I, like he was able to launder his image with this fucking stupid video. <laughs> why, why would you? <laughs> oh, of course you don't care. Um, and then Fox News picked it up, mm. and it became a huge news story in a 24-hour cycle. And they think that I am a supporter because I'm Muslim, and I'm socialist. Like I'm a communist terrorist sympathizing Muslim. Mm. This is what the what the what the overarching narrative was mm-hmm. and not that like america's foreign policy is directly responsible for 9-11 there was a period of of stability and not being canceled for a while post 2020 the election cycle ended some positive coverage came out of me you know uh, doing well and like i guess leading the zoomer flock in politics and immediately that's when people were like no f- this guy mm-hmm. <laughs> it's time again what ended up happening is yeah i bought a house i'm sorry i'm that's, sorry that's guys. Kind of i mean i know i saw i saw the headlines yeah the irony of course is that like i've been living in the same neighborhood for like eight years mm-hmm. so instead of renting i bought a house and that was deemed unacceptable by people <laughs> no one in my community was like oh man i'm giving this guy five dollars a month you're mean to tell me that he's buying stuff with that money no no no, no. we wanted you to to go fund other people's GoFundMe. oh my god like <laughs> i feel like this is all old stuff so again this probably won't end up going in the youtube and i don't know what this guy's like for like claiming things he's got like quite a lot of subs so probably won't risk it but um it's the downplaying of it right it's it's the Oh, what? I can't buy things? Like, no, bro, you can buy things, but maybe there's a bit of a question mark over buying luxury accommodation. You know? Yes, I'm enjoying the new place. It's good. Hi, Mythic. How's it going? No one cares if you buy a house, but people raise their eyebrows rightfully when you buy three million. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I mean, pandering it and views are just they are what they are. I'm not. I'm not like massively annoyed at like the guy. Like you're going to give a pandering interview, aren't you? <sighs> well, I think if I well, I, I I need to come on camera at some point. I think it's the only way that I can grow. But I'm going to do green screen, I think. I think I've got enough space to do, like, a green screen. Um, And, yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. Do a green screen with, like, a digital background. I think that would be fucking awesome, in fact. Yeah, and it's like, which I do. Some public and, and, you know, most private. Now I do it more publicly Mm -hmm. because... I, I feel kind of gross about it, but like, it's just, you have to do it. People were saying like, why don't you lobby the government 
for socialism. Very funny that people think like I have a fraction of the power yeah. that like literally any like run of the mill hundred millionaire has. I right. don't even have a fraction of that power. Mm. At a really old and still have a really old Toyota Camry 20, uh, 2010. So, uh, V6. Damn, you went all the way though. Yeah, that. so I had that for like 10 years. I'm 30. I want to get a nice car. Mm. I have enough money. To Midlife get. crisis age range. Yeah, I, I wanted to get it before. I wanted to get ahead mm. of that. So, you know, I got a, I got a Porsche Taycan. I did it publicly this time because I was like, I got to do this privately because yeah. there's no reason. It's going to seem like you're trying to hide it. And then they were still mad because last time they were like, he was trying to hide that he had a house, like mm. piece of shit hypocrite. And then they were like, he did this publicly. He's flexing. <laughs> there is no right way to use to spend your money. No, really. absolutely not. There's just it's more so about. Oh my god, the fucking copium is off the charts. The copium is off the fucking charts. I love the way that they position and structure it in such a way as to just make him sound like the put upon content creator getting unfairly criticized. Why is this dude sucking his cock? Well, because, yeah. Because he is, I guess. He doesn't understand. He doesn't get it. Or he does and he's being dishonest, but yeah. I wouldn't go on cam if I were you unless you're extremely attractive. I don't think it will help you grow and you'll be mercilessly made fun of with no benefit in return. Also, you'll eventually be docs and, and I have a kid. Oh, hey, Will in this channel. How's it going? I don't know. I feel like it's giving away something. If I if I continue to sort of, you know, stay at this level, I probably will. But yeah. I can't go back. It will be easy to get doxxed as well, because if someone finds my private stuff, they're able to match it all up. I'm only, yeah, I'm actually a, a 72 year old Vietnamese woman and I'm four foot 10. Trying to figure out another new way to be like, I don't like this person. Yeah. Here's how uh, I'm going to justify that. What was your childhood like? I was a nerdy kid. Born in the US, then moved to Turkey pretty yeah. quickly. I, I was in a Marabou. It's America. like a wee boo for like a wee. Amer mm. Yeah. You know, I, I would. Okay, placebo happened. My hands thanks. on anything that was like American and I'd love it. I would like learn about it. What were it. your favorite American things to get your hands on? Snacks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Desserts. Yeah. Oreos. <laughs> Oreos. Yeah. The American delicacy. You joke because like you have an abundance of it. Yeah. But Fuck, I've got to put a Discord announcement like, out. When I came to America for the summers, I would spend every waking moment that I had at Borders. I would sit there and I would read every comic book I could because I was like, this is free. No one is stopping me from reading these. I'm the reason. It's not Jeff Bezos. I brought down Barnes and Noble and Borders. Jeff yeah. Bezos, uh, I did the it. product of Hassan Piker. Yeah, I'm as, I'm as brave as wow. warrior. And canceled. <laughs> yeah. What was life like in Turkey? I come from a relatively affluent family and I did see uh, a shit ton of income uh, inequality, especially when I went to public school in Turkey. I went to school with like the neighborhood gardener's kid. You think that was um, the first time where I was like, oh. I'll just remind you all as well, while we're here, we're looking at Hassan. Do you know how much Hassan, money Hassan made from Twitch? <laughs> I know, dude, true. Some cringeworthy stuff on Reddit. But look at me now. I wonder if I'll cringe about what I'm like now. Who knows? We're always growing. Um, okay. This is the part of the stream where I ask you to give me money, okay? Because here's the thing. I'm not like these big streamers where they just get, you know, they get f sh showered. They get showered in money. I get, drib I get dribbles of money on me. And it's fine. I'm happy with that. But sometimes I need to remind you all, okay? So here's the ways you can support the stream, all right? Why is it delayed? Style and mile, I see the sub. It's not come up yet, but thank you in advance. Appreciate it. You're getting called out. <laughs> Dude, you were banned. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I wonder if that had an impact. You know, banned for three days. People are like, oh, I don't know. Listen, I ain't going anywhere, okay? 
I'll tell you what, though. As soon as I'm able to multi-stream, if that ever happens, I'm going to multi-stream and do a .gg. I've decided. If the government wanted to subsidise your life, would you? I mean, the government does subsidise all of our lives in one way or another. Welcome to Chud Nation. Right. See, look, the Mythic Politics came up first. That's weird. Thanks for the sub-Mythic Politics. Appreciate it. Welcome to Chud Nation. And there's Stellamar sub. Weird. Does this count? Hype train. Move. Hype train. Listen, if you can't afford to give me money, that's fine. But I'm just telling you how you can do it. Okay, so it's so you can support the channel and keep me keep me in the uh, keep me in pot noodles and energy drinks. Okay, there's a few ways you can do that. The first way is you can just send me some bits. Bits as TTS. I need to get the TTS voice thing set up. Welcome to Chud Nation. Hey, Sven, thanks for the sub. Look at that. Five sub streak. You can also send me cold hard cash directly into my pocket. It goes into the old PayPal. Made a hit piece for you. I don't... What's this? <laughs> I need to figure out why this isn't working, but look at this. <laughs> Wait, where's the sound? Oh, there we go. Disturbing footage. The producer of this video does not endorse any of the views expressed or actions taken. My Vietnamese friend, um, what? Tom <laughs> Zhu, has walked in. <laughs> hey, hey, Tom, come over here and say hello to my audience. Oh my God! Hing mong hao, hing mong di po hao, chu po hao, di po chu po hao, di po hi chu hao. Okay, just calm down. We want you. Listen, the accent it sounds like he's angry, but he's not. That's just That's the way so they good. speak. Okay, don't worry about it. Okay. Chu po hi po hao, ni mo hi po ha. That's so good. Okay, right. Thank you very much. Right, I'll see you later. Right, the music. Down. There we go. That is spot on. Oh, that is that oh. that is spot on. <laughs> you have to have seen uh, that that old man laundry video to get it. I think. <clears throat> yeah, I'll link it. There we go. I'm actually speaking to old man laundry, but it's going to be off stream. Uh, so yeah, we'll see what we'll see what is discussed. But yeah, I just want to understand what, you know, what his goal is really, because I know people are saying he's a clout chaser and stuff. I think he genuinely is concerned and he's got worries about Mr. Girl. Um, and the thing is for me is like, obviously I've got criticisms of the video that I've already made, but if you don't like Mr. Girl, that's fine. Like, that's up to you. But I think what I take issue with most is is this idea of like trying to force other people to take action off the basis of your thoughts about someone. I think that's the main thing. That seems to be the tone of the video. And based on what he said on Twitter, it seems like he kind of wants people to disassociate. You know? Anyway, good meme. Oh, damn, this is like kind of fucked up. That you have something that yeah. you were just born into? This is just a kid like me, but they're in a situation, it seems like, they don't have all the cool stuff that I can have. That definitely, uh, you know, impacted my perspective a little bit. But other than that, I mean, it was all right. Turkey was, it was fine. I just, I spent most of my time drawing, playing video games. Wait, you said I make 80K a year. <laughs> I don't make 80, where do people pull these fucking figures from? I don't make 80K a year. Are you fucking insane? <laughs> where do you get that figure from? I never said I make 7k a month, you fucking idiot. I never said I make 7k a month. Why do people keep fucking coming up with bullshit figures? I don't make 7k a month, okay? <clears throat> my my streaming, my media business, it sounds cringe to call it that, okay? 
turns over between seven and eight K a month. Turns over. I don't make that. The business turns over that, i.e., the money that comes in before expenditure is seven to eight thousand dollars. Before tax, before everything, before I pay DK, fucking hell. Please get some fucking economic literacy, Jesus. He'll draw. No, I gave it up because my dad was like, you need to become a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer. This drawing stuff is great, but you can't make money. Dude. My channel stream Patreon only makes around $1,600 a month. It's because I'm a filthy, you know. Anyway, sorry, sheep. I feel bad. I went off on you there. I didn't, you didn't really deserve it. It just pisses me off when people just say, like, make all these assumptions and make 80,000 80, pound a year. I, that's insane money. I'm nowhere close to that yet. Even the mods aren't safe. Anyway, let's read the rest of it. Put your top 5% UK wage and you're looking to grow presumably. So at some point, surely the idea of this whole Twitch thing is to reach a sound level at some point. Um, could you honestly say you are and would be all that different? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say, isn't it? It's hard to say. Because it's easy to say, I mean, I, you know, I, do, I, well, I don't think that I would ever buy like a fucking Porsche or a Gucci shirt or something like that. If I ever got to the stage where I was earning that much money, once all of my other affairs are sorted, then yeah, if I had excess money, I'd want to do something with it, you know? I don't use a car. I use public transport to go everywhere. But this is what's interesting for me is like how how much can we go against the incentives that are placed before us, you know? $200 coffee machine. If I stream more than once a month on my 100K channel, I bet I could make bank. Well, that's the thing, isn't it, Jeff? Like, it depends what you what you want to do and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. Um, would I be different? I've always said I'd want to do something. But like, pff. would I? That's the question, isn't it? Would I? How do you how do you take advantage of having excess resources that isn't just giving the money to charity? You know. But yeah, we'll see what happens. I've just sorted out all of my like banking stuff. So I've got like a new savings account. I've got like, you know, loads of different things kind of going on trying to sort out. Because, you know, my financial situation, I was terrible like five years ago. I was just an absolute nightmare. Um, but yeah, one thing is I'm not doing anything on credit, nothing on credit. Maybe, maybe there's an app, there's a thing on Amazon where you can split the cost over a few months. Maybe something like that on a big purchase. But like, I'm generally just want to have the money on hand to buy something. Do you know what I mean? Credit's a fucking terrible idea.
Credit is just temptation, basically. You need to have a lot of willpower. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. The other problem I've got as well is like I'm trying to find ways to maximize the amount of money I get from conversion rates too, because obviously I get paid everything in dollars. And because I'm based in the UK, everything gets converted to pounds before I get paid. But like Twitch's conversion rate is really fucking shit. And I don't, I've changed, I don't know how, if I could get, I don't think I can get paid in dollars because I'm in the UK. And I've got a, an account now where I can take dollars in and the conversion rate they give is just the normal conversion rate with a very small fee. But I don't know if I can get paid in dollars. So it kind of sucks really. You know, I'll probably lose like, not that much, but it's like 20 or 30 quid each month on conversion being different or whatever. <clears throat> Unironically, I would be financially better off if I moved to the US. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't know what the taxes would look like. And I'd probably have to get health insurance. But if I had like a super, if I had like a really bad medical condition, like if I got cancer, I'd just come back to the UK, obviously, and get treated over here. But yeah, I could just come back to the UK. I'll be able to stay with my parents or something. No sheep, sorry. I feel bad for having to go at you. <laughs> I feel bad for having to go at you because it wasn't... I just find it annoying that, I don't know. But yeah, no, it is an interesting point. I agree with you. And it really, you know, the way I see it is like, it's e my view is it's easy to say you're not going to do something when it's in front of you. You know, when 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 it's not in front of you. It's easy to say, no, I wouldn't do that. But like, I don't know. I don't want to promise something that I don't know if I can deliver. You know? I don't make... So, God. Oh, okay. Let's continue. Doing it. You wanted me to pursue my passion while also simultaneously telling me that like, but like you also need to make a living. You'll, you'll starve. That's what I did. I focused on, uh, you know, I focused on getting- I'll tell, Okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, listen. I'll tell you what I'm thinking, right? Obviously the place I've got at the moment is great, but obviously I am renting. I'd love to eventually get a place of myself, for myself. But in order to get a place for myself, I'd have to save like 20 or 30,000 pounds as a deposit. And that's a lot of money. And I might be able to get a mortgage on like an, a 100,000 100, pound apartment or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's that's something that would be way in the future. And the thing is, is like what I'm seeing now is, and I saw Devin Nash talk about this, but he spoke about how as streamers grow, they start to make more money from sponsorships and it becomes a bigger part of like their financial income. And it's true. Like, I think I need to chase sponsorships more. Um, Cause that's, if I can get like a sponsorship a month, that would, that would really sort me out. But I'd love to have like a flat of my own that I could and I could build like a studio within it, you know, I could do like a, a little studio room or something that's soundproofed so I wouldn't have to worry about disturbing neighbors and stuff. But that's way in the future, you know. That probably wouldn't be too hard. I wish I knew a good VPN to use. Yeah, I need to I need to follow that up. But today I've got it in my stream in like th about three hours time because my kids are coming over. So I'm going to use the opportunity after that to just spend some time just ticking some boxes, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Gaming streamers can get a sponsor a week. But yeah, it's that's all for the future, you know, but yeah. They're bringing back right to buy, get a council house and buy it. I mean, that's pretty tough. And now I stream on Twitch, so it doesn't even matter. What first drew you to politics? You live on that side of the planet. You're constantly paying attention to what America's doing. Mm -hmm. 
because America's actions in the Middle East impact your life. It was first anyway, survival, first and foremost. listen, I'm no expert in any of this. A lot of people pay attention to me on an international level because <laughs> they're because I'm covering American politics from the point of view of someone who didn't grow up here. I was definitely bullied a lot. When we were growing up, being a nerd wasn't like super cool, right? No, no it yeah. wasn't. Now it is. Now you're like, you got like kids on TikTok who reject this. But they're like, right, okay. <laughs> so, right. Let me just show you how this works, okay? So, into the pot goes numerous forms of income, okay? So this is just the raw amount of money that is coming in, okay? So on here, you've got things like Twitch, okay? I can't spell. <laughs> and then you've got Donos, okay? Right? And then here, you've got YouTube, right? And then you've got, let's say, like sponsorships as well, okay? Although that's quite, that's that's increasing, but still quite low, right? So there's like a raw, there's like a raw figure coming in, coming in to what I'm doing, right? And then basically there's this funnel and through the funnel, there's things that have to be paid. So there's your outgoings, right? So one of those, one of the big outgoings is tax. Now, this, the stage that my thing is at is that I don't start paying tax until the, until the end of this year, where I pay tax on what I've earned. Pre, it's com complicated, but that's something I need to consider. I need to, I need to make sure I'm putting some money away for tax considerations. Okay. For the buckets. And also, there's other outgoings, like wages. Now, fortunately, I don't have many employees. I don't really have any employees. But obviously, I've got to pay DK the money from YouTube. Okay? And then there's other things that come out as well. Like, I'm not a business expert. Don't get me wrong. So, you know, but I'm just... This is a very simple explanation of it, okay? And then there's other stuff as well. So there's just like, I don't know, buying a... Um, buying a... What? Buying a desk, buying a new computer desk, which I had to do recently, okay? Okay. <laughs> and then out the bottom, right? And out the bottom, I can keep the profit. Is it net profit? Is that it? Is it net or gross? I always get those two confused. Is it net profit after everything's been taken out? I always get those two confused. Okay. So... When I say that it's turning over X amount of money, what I mean is everything coming in equals this, okay? It doesn't take into account tax, any outgoings I've got, any business costs that I've got, and stuff like that, all right? And then at the bottom is the money I can keep. So please, please stop thinking that I'm earning like fucking 70 or 80K. I'm not earning that, okay? We get it, Chud, you're a billionaire. Oh, okay. Net profit reflects the amount of money you are left with after having paid your, all your all your allowable business expense, while gross profit is the amount of money you are left with after deducting cost of goods sold from revenue. I'm not trying to flex. I'm just, you know, obviously it's come up a few times recently, and I just it annoys me because people don't know what they're talking about. 
you know. And I don't want people to think that I'm like some fucking struggling person because I'm not. I'm doing okay. But also, I don't want people to think that like I'm fucking this mega wealthy streamer because I'm not, okay? Like, yeah, I'm a nerd. No, I remember secretly talking about Pokemon with my friends in elementary school because the other kids would look at me weird and, and you know, shun me. Yeah. Otherwise. It was not like oh, a sick no. thing. The other thing as well... The other thing as well is I need to sort a pension out too, I've realized. I was looking through, I've sorted all like my documents out as well. I've been on a massive spree of sorting my life out. I've got like two pension funds from old company business I work for. I'm like, I need to like some, somehow consolidate those and get a new pension fund sorted. Because otherwise, I'm going to be fucking cream crackered when it comes to a few years down the line. So then imagine being that, but in turkey where they have no frame of reference even they just like looked at me like i was just some weirdo i was kind of bigger i wasn't as big as i am now so i was always worried and i think people saw that from or like bullies saw that and were like the i'm gonna capitalize on that insecurity i'm gonna take down like a big guy how do you think bullying has has shaped who you are now two yeah. pension funds i'm 35 but i work for two companies for quite a long time one's got like 1700 pound in i think the other one's got like £1,200. And that was after working there for a little while and a few years of growth. It's not any, it's not that crazy. Is it called the 401k in America? Yeah, I've got nothing saved for retirement whatsoever. So I need to, I need to sort that shit out or I'll be fucked. Are you kidding? Okay. But yeah. You need you need to plan for your retirement, obviously. Oh, well, the government pension isn't that like isn't that like what? How much is that a year? Isn't that like one hundred and sixty five pound a month at the moment? Yeah, I don't think I can survive on that. It it taught or me a week. I can't remember. The reason why they're doing it is because they are deeply flawed. Did you see that when you were young? I think I saw it when I got older. I realized looking back that it was their own personal insecurities. Growing up, you also always questioned authority. Was that something that was instilled within you? Is that something that developed? I kept going with the with streak I had in me of like not wanting uh, to, to live under the oppressive thumb of my parents. <laughs> Even though they gave you the privileged life that you 100%, were yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, exactly. I think that there was like flaws in their parenting, obviously, that I recognize now. They wouldn't let me be on MSN Messenger because they thought like a pedophile would. Uh, you know, steal me. Can't even communicate with my friends. Like, this sucks. Yeah. They wouldn't let me play online games, so I had to, like, find ways around that. Of course, uh, growing uh, under the Erdogan regime's inception in Turkey, you know, a 20-plus year-long uh, regime now, I realized, like, oh, shit, this sucks. Like, I do not like conservatism right. at all. I right. despise it. Military pension, civilian pension, and social security benefits. College, That's really good. I wanted to go to Miami because it's nice weather and I wanted to party. So uh, I went to the University of Miami for a year, living like this sheltered life with my family to like being 18 years old and being treated as an adult because you're in college. Developed an unhealthy uh, uh, attitude about alcohol. I was a promoter in Miami, University uh, of Miami. I uh, promoted for nightclubs there. It was just like a way for me to be able to go to nightclubs and drink for free. These were not nightclubs and they were plus 18 avenues ventures allegedly oh because you're 18 holy f you were not the 18 year old mm -hmm. that did not get the 18 yes. year olds to not go to the club yes exactly how did your experience in the u.s compare to your expectations because the freedom the abundance like yeah. everything was great you know i'm a degenerate i'm a hedonist it was awesome uh -huh. on all of those avenues and then i became an adult uh -huh. Once I left college, I was like, oh, this sucks. I came to LA, was very lucky. Uh, I couldn't find a job, but at least my uncle had uh, an opportunity for me to intern for his YouTube channel. My salary was abysmally low, living in the kitchen of a fraternity house. That's when I was like, oh shit, maybe this like America stuff that they were talking about, like maybe it was bullshit. Midway through, you know, my content creation uh, part, I started getting better at it. The internal recognition was not there at all though. Uh, so that was like a big chip on my shoulder and it constantly felt like an uphill battle. So I was like, I need to do something for myself. And because of that, I, I guess I was like constantly, constantly working on improvement that uh, because of those goals, I was like too busy to even care about, you know, 
what my what my financial circumstances were. January 2020, I started the election cycle. COVID caused everybody to stay indoors. Yeah. George Floyd uh, protests were happening and everyone wanted to understand what was going on. And they realized like, oh, there's a dude who's literally live all the time. This and time. then you were like, cool, 3,600 hours this year. Yeah. Like, full throttle. That's like, like yeah. 10 hours a day. Pretty much like waking up, streaming, going to sleep, streaming. How do you deal with the waves of negativity? I internalize it and I just, <laughs> I hold on I can to see it. All that. I can see a lot of tension in your shoulders yeah. right now. You just I, hold it right here. Yeah, I hold it right here. And then I, and I work out and I get angry and then I, you know, mm. fire off on some random unsuspecting mm. person in my chat. I don't have time to pre-watch every video that I want to play on stream because I'm too busy f***ing your mother. Sorry. Are you ever trolling? <laughs> oh, oh, always. And do people believe that you actually believe the things that you're saying when you play the conservative character? Brother, this is a right wing broadcast. You mean to tell me a libtard would be a Korea veteran? I hope they do. Like yeah. Hank Pecker. I, I want them to believe that that's like a real person. Yeah, they are conservative. Pecker, I did not know his name. Hank Pecker. Yeah. That's my name. I'm in here in a libtard studio with bisexual lighting <laughs> i did it just i did yeah. it just for you hank people sometimes have a hard time understanding what my political position is because they're they're so used to people being like i love the democrats or i love the republicans and i'm yeah. like both of them they're both terrible and people hear me like absolutely shitting on it i really i really feel like um hassan does sheepdog pretty hard for the democrats despite all of his critiques I feel like when it comes to election time, he's out there sheepdogging like all the rest. I don't know. I know some libs might actually like that. It's not really like a, a sort of... I just I just think that sometimes these figures will present a very radical aesthetic. But then when it comes to election time, it'll be, well, go and vote. But yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> what was his um coverage? What was his coverage like during election season? But no, no, you don't understand. It's not about being pragmatic, okay? The point is, it's using the aesthetics of radicalism while still promoting the idea of, of like voting pretty hardcore. He wasn't burning your bust. He definitely wasn't burning your bust. He wasn't burning your bust. I'm pretty sure that he begrudgingly said, yeah, vote for Biden. But during election season, it was all steam ahead. Vote for the Democrats, right? It'd be irresponsible for him to not give that advice, though. There's, a, but okay. I mean, maybe Hassan isn't the best example of this, but I do, I do think that um, there's like this, this, this kind of there's a difference between saying vote and like pushing super hard for people to go and vote for, say, Biden. But yeah, I know you fucking libs are probably like, yeah, fucking based. Nancy uh, Pelosi, you. they probably yeah. think I'm like a Republican. But then also on top of that, when I do that accent, they're like, wait a minute, this guy. You don't see AOC yeah. going out there playing a Republican character. Well, she's a politician, <laughs> you know? But people look at you like you're a politician. I know, it's ridiculous. I'm yeah. not. I am literally a dumb himbo on Twitch. Like, I make jokes about, you know, Chrissy. Yeah, yeah which, you know, we can understand why. <laughs> So it, it, it is ridiculous that people like hold yeah. me to that standard that I myself yeah. do not hold myself to. I, like, yeah. I see myself as an entertainer, a worldview, and and I'm honest about it. Mm -hmm. But okay, can we not argue about Bernie or Bus, please? Like it's literally two years later. Okay, I'm begging you. Can we stop arguing about Bernie or fucking Bust? Uh, ultimately, I also like to have. You fun. got what you wanted, Lib. People, Shut up. Uh, people want you to be serious all the time. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, no, it we sucks. we want to talk about Cussy. Okay, yeah. we, we want to get deep in that cussy. Oh God, I just, <laughs> what have I done? Leading up to this interview, 
I was a little nervous. I'm like, Hassan, this this guy is intimidating us for some reason. Have you been told that before? Yes. I don't know why. I think I'm like a I'm like a teddy bear, but I mean, it could be the the six foot four uh, bodybuilder demeanor. That's literally part of the reason why I paint my nails. I think it makes me look less intimidating. Is that why you wear a choker? <laughs> I like accessorizing. I think men don't have a lot of options to accessorize. Yes, it's messed that's up. true. I think accessorizing sucks, and men, sh men shouldn't do it. I do. I do think that that is true. Like, go and look at men's accessories and it's all boring shit. I bought this gay little bag. Why do I have to call it a gay little bag? It's a good bag. No, you have some <laughs> sick jewelry. What do you got? Let me see. You are, that's that's all for one finger. You have three for, three for one, one finger. finger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's wild. It, can, it yeah. won't even fit. It, what, are your fingers too meaty? Yeah. You got oh, it sausage? fit my pinky. Oh, damn. That went on my biggest finger. Do you pride yourself in kind of shattering the expectations for, uh, you know, party divides and party expectations? I definitely transcend beyond like uh, you know, party loyalty for sure. Yeah. It's not a surprise to me when Democrats and Republicans regularly find bipartisan consensus for things that actually matter mm -hmm. materially. Things that we disagree on are really impactful and really important, except they are what is known as wedge issues created specifically for the purpose of causing division and making it seem like a party is different than the other party. Mm -hmm. It's all cultivated. It's it's mass outrage and mass panic that you're causing, that you're creating, creating this division so you can get people to vote for you rather than the other side. Why do you think everything is so divisive? It sounds like a lot of the beliefs of Americans in general do line up, but there is this idea that we are 100% divided on everything. The different kinds of cookies that you buy at the aisle is owned by the same company, but they gotta make it seem like they're different, right? In the grand scheme of things, like those wedge issues do have serious impact on the, the people that we're talking about, whether it's yeah. immigrants, uh, whether it's trans kids, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, you know gay kids, whether it's uh, women that want to get an abortion or have uh, autonomy over their own mm -hmm. bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, these are these are definitely so I got distracted. things that I got are distracted. Causing, that you're creating, creating this division so you can get people to vote for you rather than the other side. Why do you think everything is so divisive? It sounds like a lot of the beliefs of Americans in general do line up, but there is this idea that we are. I don't I don't I don't think that's true. I think that there are very mixed opinions on lots of different things. I mean, you know. There's like some fundamental differences in terms of like how tax policy should work, how the welfare state should work. <laughs> I don't know if this is like, I don't know if I don't agree with this. I think this is wrong. What What is it that Americans agree on? Like, what are you on about? 100% divided on everything. The different kinds of cookies that you buy at the aisle oh, is dude. owned by the same company, but they got to make it seem like they're different, right? In the grand scheme of things, like, those wedge issues do have serious. I yeah. I mean, I just, I really, I really fucking hate. I really hate like the, oh, the Democrats and the Republicans. It's all the same shit, basically. Um, I just, I just, I think that's very a very lazy way of looking at it. You know. Serious impact on the the people that we're talking about, whether it's yeah. immigrants, uh, whether it's trans kids. Uh, whether it's, uh, you know, gay kids, whether it's uh, women uh, that want to get an abortion or have uh, autonomy over their own mm -hmm. bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, these are these are definitely things that are impactful to those individuals. But ultimately, they're perfectly crafted in a way that that creates division. And I noticed you mentioned some things and then you were like, well, not everyone. Do you feel like that's a reflex for you now after streaming for so many hours for you to kind of over explain your position on things now? Yeah, there is that uh, type of speaking Yeah, where uh, you reflexively defend positions that like no human being would ever think you have to defend. And I do that all the time. I have to constantly and consistently qualify every single sentence that I put out there especially because I am constantly under the the mindset that there are people out there that are watching every single thing that I'm saying and doing and will use that to to clip it in a different way mm -hmm. and and make it seem like I believe in the the opposite of what I actually believe. It's insane that I have to do that, but it's just the part of the job. Mm -hmm. It's the way I see it. Most normal people, they probably think like, what the f why does this guy keep like 
saying he he hates Putin. Well, it's because like, you know, people will literally say, no, you love Putin. Right. And right. we'll cut it in a way to make it seem like that. You, you say you like oranges and someone will pop out of somewhere and be like, oh. I mean, th this is this is um, this is an this is just a general issue where people do want to just take things in the worst possible framing and paint you in a certain way. Um, I don't think he helped his case, though. Because he did sound at times like he fucking wanted to suck Putin's dick. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe don't be so smug. Like, oh, I don't know. The whole fucking Ukraine stuff, his coverage was just... It wasn't very good. It just wasn't very good. It was just a car crash, yeah. Oh, that means you fucking hate apples. Like, how dare you? I love apples. You are angry at me for eating apples. Why do you hate right. me? I have a, a Vladimir Putin is bad sign that's like <laughs> flipping on the corner of the screen all day, every day. <laughs> so no one can clip it and be like, see? No, but they still do. They still clip it. Even when it has the... Yeah, because it doesn't matter. What you see in front of your eyes is unimportant as long as like you have a preconceived notion of a particular person. And I, I think it kind of breaks people's minds when they see someone like you posing with a gun. Before we get more into that, I want to let you know that you can watch other- Yeah, wasn't, yeah, wasn't the, um, um, because he said about the crime, I read into it briefly. Obviously, I don't really talk about foreign policy shit because I'm an idiot. But I'm pretty sure the Crimean annexation was condemned globally as like an act of Russian aggression, right? Like it wasn't like, oh yeah, that's fine. That's actually based. Other episodes with prominent figures like I spent a day with Mia Khalifa, Corpse, Amaranth, Dream, and so many others here on YouTube or on the completely uncensored podcast version of the show by clicking the link down in the description below. And I'd also like to thank Honey for sponsoring this episode and supporting us in continuing to improve this series. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one that it finds to your cart so you don't have to stare at that empty discount code box every time you're at checkout because if Honey finds a coupon that works, a Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupon. And Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, ranging from tech to popular fashion brands and food delivery. I don't Honey think has great. personally saved me a f ton of money when I venture into my online buying no, I'm trends, not gonna skip the including ads. the new shoes the ads. Hassan and I will be wearing on our way to the video as well. Again, uh, Honey out. is free and it installs in just a few seconds. So if you want to do yourself a solid and also support this series, get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Padilla. Again, it's free. And I'm only going to say this one more time. What is so honey? Listen closely. Go to joinhoney.com slash Padilla and you'll be directly supporting this series. Now back to the world of Hassan Biker. And I, I think it kind of breaks people's minds when they see someone like you posing with a gun, you know? What the hell is this? That, that sounds fucking yikes, yeah. No, they're like, oh, uh, I guess that means that you are uh, alt-right. And then you're saying these things <laughs> that are against that. And then they're like, uh, I don't know what that means. You're right. I mean, I, I, I enjoy shooting guns. I think guns are fun. Mm -hmm. They're, but they're murder weapons. They're, that's the only purpose of a gun is to murder. We got to dispel this notion that like liberals don't like guns. I think liberals like guns too. It's just like America. We have more guns than we have people. Yeah. It's crazy out here. It's it's bananas. They should definitely stop that. Put the toothpaste back in the tube. It's very hard to do. I tried it. We got to do it. We got to yeah. figure it out. And it goes back to, again, our lack of community and our alienation from our labor and our alienation from one another. The only type of cultural signifier that we have is our commodity consumption. It's just kind of fucking real. I just, it's just unreal. <laughs> this is the dude, the poor fucking Gucci shirt. Like zero fucking self-awareness whatsoever. <laughs> what? Yeah, so as a lefty, you should stand against that. You should be like, I'm not going to indulge and, and promote this, be part of this um, promotion of this commodity consumption, especially when it's just like luxury brands. But no, he's got no self-awareness, apparently. 
I just like what can you what can you even say at this point? What can you even fucking say? Like it's just so blatant at this point. What you're wearing, what you consume, no, going right, to Apple. Have a good one. Are you a fan of Diet Coke or are you a fan of Diet Pepsi? And in many ways, these things become attached to identity. Yes, that is exactly what it oh is. And guns God. are a part of that. I love guns, brother. <laughs> you know, I'm a gun guy. That's the Republican dude version of a Gucci. The idea that like he just fucking wait. He just fucking said the word Gucci. Guns, brother. You know, I'm a gun guy. That's the Republican dude version of a Gucci. He just fu Oh my fucking god, I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose it, I swear to god. I'm gonna fucking lose it. This motherfucker, this motherfucker was talking about being in the Gucci store. He was talking about being in the Gucci store. This is like an unbelievable levels of audacity now. Gucci. The idea that like people are gonna come and break into your house, that's why you need an AR-15 for self-defense, is idiotic. Because anyone who has ever shot a gun knows that AR-15s are terrible for home defense. You will literally blow through eight of your f***ing walls and probably shoot the name. Is leftism, is leftism anti-commodity consumption? Um, no. Obviously not, because we have to consume commodities because everything is fucking commodified in our society. We don't have a choice but to consume commodities, or we would literally die. But what I'm pointing out is there's commodity consumption of getting essentials or even getting something nice versus buying a fucking thousand dollar Gucci shirt and saying shit like this. Neighbor, if you try to do a self-defense with an AR-15, mm -hmm. unless you are getting uh, broken into your home by like a Nicaraguan death squad. And then they're gonna make a movie about your life. Unless you're John Wick, you don't need to yeah. do self-defense. A gun, a pistol will do, um, or, or better than that, the best uh, self-defense tool is a shotgun. You are constantly discussing and questioning beliefs. I try. And I, I question myself a lot too. People say I'm confident. I have crippling self-doubt, like so much self-doubt. What if I'm getting something wrong? What if I will get this wrong? What if I'll get that wrong? I don't want to misinform people. And I do get things wrong. Leftism equals no Gucci. No, leftism to me is not something where you should engage in this, this conspicuous consumption. I think it's cringe. I just, I just don't think it fits. I don't think it fits at all. Like the greatest example of this is the invasion of Ukraine. I was incredibly confident that Russia would not invade Ukraine because of all of the reasons why that invasion is going south right now. I, I demonstrated a level of confidence that I should not have. When you deviate away from that and you get something wrong, people that want to be right will never let you forget that and will constantly harp on it and will constantly use that to like undermine your perspective. There were a lot of people that for the first couple days of the invasion, when I was doing my coverage, would come in specifically to be like, hold this L. I'm like, dude, there are people dying on screen. They want to celebrate your loss? Yeah, what's wrong with you? You must get recognized a lot. Yeah, I do get recognized, yes. I love it. I don't have any issue with it. I owe everything to my fans, everything. I would be nothing without them. And I your haters. Would, not my haters. <laughs> they, can, they can rot in hell. Okay? They get you views. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I don't want their views. Hey, That's the one the thing best. I realize you is that if you're constantly on the internet, also shout out to a lot of your interactions Shams. are Mythic unfortunately painted by those people that uh, can, can swarm a comment section, make you think, oh man, I wonder how many other people now feel this way about me even though it's completely untrue. And then I go outside and then I meet people and I talk to them. And then I remember again, like, oh no, these people on the internet are not real people. But ultimately I, yeah, I just got to maintain that attitude always. And, yeah. And think about, you know, the real world. And in yeah. the real world, either A, no one gives a shit or B, if they do, they're usually very positive. Mm -hmm. Never had a negative interaction with someone in the real world yeah i mean i hope that doesn't change but when you reach a certain size you do have the opportunity to make changes in people's lives and it's something that i often take for granted or forget about but it's it's awesome to see it in real life in public that's what makes it worth it what's next for hassan is there anything you could hint just what i've been doing honestly yeah. I, I just 
everybody always asks, like, what are you going to do next? What are you going to do next? Like, have you been offered a show yet? Yeah. Yeah. And I have plenty of times, and I don't like that. I don't want to. I love what I do. I'm very fortunate. You know, I love having a place where I can go to every day and talk about politics every day. I don't want to. I don't want to expand. I don't want to grow. I'll grow, but as long as I can grow in my own pace, as long as I can continue doing what I'm doing Mm. and not change that, not be beholden to a larger company or investors Mm. or anything like that then I'm fine. I'm fine with that growth. Well, there you have it. I spent today with Hassan Piker and it's made me realize how everything we do, wear, and believe all make up our identity. And anything that threatens those things can feel like a personal affront to our well-being. Maybe the world would be filled with much less rage if we were all encouraging of remaining open-minded and evolving, even if it were to threaten those things that we once thought defined us. There we go. Well, that interview was uh, fairly cringe. That's my favorite thing is like when people are like, you're a product of nepotism. It's like, yes, I am. I recognize it. And I talk about it regularly. Mm-hmm. Dude, nobody would watch you if you're not hot. I'm like, thing thing. I like how they can't help but compliment you while yeah, they're trying to like, criticize you. And they'll be like, oh, dude, you're so successful. <laughs> you're so fucking hot and, and successful. Like, and Thanks. I mean, I... I, I I do. I do recognize that I'm like an incredibly fortunate person. And incredibly handsome. Well, I don't think so, but thank you. <laughs> that's nice of you to say. Hey, um, you know, from one himbo to another, I got I to gotta lay it down. Thank you. Yeah. Hit it. I mean, yeah, like saying you're good looking is the compliment. You're saying that like, you got lucky with your genes and that's about it. And your upbringing and stuff. Oh, hey, Kruin. So cringe. If I had one wish, I'll completely memory hold a sound to these normally dipshit channels. Stop pulling out self suck videos of him. Yeah, that was cringe. But there we go.